I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning, and I'd especially like to recognize Carolyn for the wonderful music, the beautiful melodies that she plays while we're Amen. meditating Amen. and praying. Amen. Welcome, everyone. We're so happy that we have the York Church visiting us today. Warm welcome to everyone. And um, I have some announcements to read to you. They're all in the bulletin if you'd like to follow along. Um, first of all, we need to pray for the Hurricane Ian victims. There was pretty much devastation in Florida and then along our, our coastline also, South and North Carolina. We need to pray for all of these people, pray for them that uh, they can hear God's voice through all of the, the pain and suffering that they may be facing. We pray for the families that have lost their loved ones. On a brighter note, there's a fellowship lunch today. After the church service, please stay and enjoy our favorite dishes. And we're delighted that the York Church is here today too. So we want to enjoy worship and uh, fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Prayer meeting on Tuesday night at six o'clock. Please read chapters 50 and 51 of the Desire of Ages for this meeting. And all are encouraged to join us. We have a discussion, we read a little bit, we discuss some and we, um, we kind of share and learn from each other. And that's what God wants us to do. If you see something there that, that touches your heart, let us know because we can, we can learn from it also. And the uh, Thursday morning Bible study at Carolyn's house will be studying the investigative judgment. And the text to memorize is John 5, 22. And I'm sure at your home, you have a discussion also where you share. It's, it's just, just what God wants us to do. He wants us to be together sharing his word and loving each other. Sabbath, October 15th, is Outdoor Sabbath School Church and Potluck Lunch, and it will be at Shelter One in Lanswood Canal State Park. The address is here, 2051 Park Drive, Catawba, South Carolina, and the potluck menu is sandwiches and salads because there are no um, electrical outlets there. The park encompasses 448 acres and has lovely level walking trail beside the river. Our shelter re reservation does not include your park entrance fee, which is $6 for adults, $3.75 for senior citizens, and $3.50 for kids, and five and under children are free. And we'd like to invite the York Church, too, to come along to that if you would like to come out and worship in nature. And then I have several York um, announcements, and they would like to invite everyone here at the Rock Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church to join them at the following. On October 8th, the York Seventh-day Adventist Pathfinder Group has planned a trip to visit the Carolina Raptor Center. And anyone that is interested in making this trip should um, speak to Pastor Tom following today's service. On November 5th, the York Seventh-day Adventist Church will be having a fall festival at the residence of Dave and Laura Cook. It will be an amazing time of fellowship and fun, and details and specifics will be sent to Pastor Casey. On October 8th, 9th, and 10th, the York Seventh-day Adventist Church will be having a revival series each night, and that we are invited to come and join on those nights. Ruth has uh, several announcements that she would like to make also. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First announcement I have is, and I meant to bring this up the last time I spoke, but I would like to invite anybody who is here first thing when we open up the church um, before Sabbath school to join me here in the sanctuary for prayer. Um, I'm not doing praying out loud. I want us to gather together to pray for this church, to lift each other up, 
Um, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm just praying silently myself and praying for things that I, I feel heavy on my heart. But I think this is something that we really, really need um, here in this church. Now, the other thing on a little bit more upbeat note <laughs> is, you know, this is October 1st. And you know what's around the corner is the holidays. And I have been tasked with doing our Christmas program again once, this, once again this year. So I am looking for volunteers. Now what my plans are is, we, yes, we're going to do some of the Christmas uh, hymns and we're going to do some special music. Anybody that would like to do special music, please let me know what you want to do. Um, that type of thing can be instrumental, can be vocal. But the difference that I'm going to do this year is I want us to share Christmas miracles. I want to share some different stories. Now, these can be personal stories from your life of something that has happened. This can be a story of something that you've heard. Um, I, I'm not limiting it, but I just want it to encompass the spirit and the miracle of the birth of Christ. Now I'm also, I will do it if nothing else, but I didn't want to do every a lot, but I'm also looking for somebody who maybe has a little acting talent because I want to tell the birth of Christ, but we're telling it from a third person. And that's all I really want. I don't want to, I don't want to do a spoiler alert, alert there. But so if I have somebody who has a little bit of acting, you know, a little bit of spark there, we have some um, costumes and stuff. Well, we're going to dig out a costume for it. And um, but I, I was hoping that somebody would maybe have a, a desire to maybe put forth a little bit of a acting talent to uh, um, to help to uh, spice up our, our Christmas program this year. So I'm looking for volunteers. So let me know. I'd like to really get this set here in the next few weeks as far as what we're going to do and that type of thing so people have a, uh, have a chance to practice. And that's all my announcements. I'm pretty much done with all of the announcements, but um, if you would like, turn around to the people that are right close to you, give them a, a good morning, welcome, greet each other, and um, from the from up here, I'm so happy that everyone is here. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Good Sabbath. I'm going to invite you to take your hymn notes for to this morning's uh, responsive reading. It will be number 702, number 702 in the back of your hymn notes. Um, responsive reading number 702. I will read the light print, you will read the dark print, and we'll come together at the end. Number 702, and when you have it, please say amen. 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 A couple more pages turning there. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak all his wonders. Glory in his name, his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. Remember in his wonders which he gives us done. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth altogether. He has remembered his covenant forever. 
the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Amen and amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It's time now to call the worship. Do you all stand, please? so gracious for your love that you have for us, Lord, for the peace that you give us. Father, we are here to praise you, to adore you, to uplift you, dear Father, for we are nothing without you. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day as we come together as one in the body of Christ. We just pray that the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us, that our hearts and our minds will be open. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace that you'll always deal with us. You never leave us, nor forsake us, Lord. Father, we just are here again today. We want to thank you for being our very best of friend and give you all the glory. For it's in thy most and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning and happy Sabbath. Please remain standing for our hymn of worship. Hymn number 338, Redeemed. Now time for our tithes and offerings. And today it's for the local church budget. Our appeal is from John 15 verse 4. Remain in me 
as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. We worship God with our resources as responses to the call to bear fruits. John the Baptist appealed to those who were coming to him for baptism. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, Matthew 38. For John, baptism and being part of God's people were not sufficient. The Gospel of Luke shares some concrete examples of the fruit of repentance that John the Baptist gave to those who came to him. He asked the tax collectors not to collect any more than was required. He exhorted the soldiers not to extort money and be content with your pay. And he commanded the crowd to share their second shirt and food with the ones who do not have, Luke 3, 10 through 14. These examples reported by Luke have something in common. They are related to one's attitude towards finances and material possessions. Fruit of repentance comprises being careful about the means used to obtain resources and using our resources to bless others. The Bible tells the story of a man, Nabal, the son of Abraham, who was heavily blessed, but did not bear the fruit of repentance in his material life. He refused to reward those who protected his flock and would harshly rebuke the servants of David who came to ask for some food. This attitude led his wife to call him wicked and to make the following comment. He is just like his name. His name means fool and folly goes with him. 1 Samuel 25, 25. Sadly, the following day, he had a stroke and 10 days later, he died. As we reflect on the need to bear more fruits of repentance in our material life, let us apply the advice of Jesus. Remain in me as I also remain in you. The result would be beyond expectation. This week, as we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, we can bear fruits of repentance. Have you ever tried to outgive God? <laughs> it's not possible because the more we give, the more he blesses. Lord, we want to be a fruits of repentance in all aspects of life. Please help us to remain connected with you daily through regular prayer and Bible study. It is all of us in response to all of him. Would the deacons please come forward? Doxology. Praise God.
Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to work and to earn and to re repay our tithes and our offerings. Everything belongs to you, Lord. We're just returning what is already yours. We pray that you will bless this money and spread the um, evangelism around throughout our country, throughout the world, and come back soon to take us to heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. 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 It's good to be with you this morning. And I want to remember our brothers and sisters that, that are still in York and uh, that the Holy Spirit will be with them this morning as well. But it is an honor to be in church all together and fellowshipping one with another. And so at this time, we will have our garden of prayer. So those of you who are able to kneel, uh, let us kneel at this time. Precious and holy Father, we thank you so much. It's a privilege to be in your presence. And Father, I pray that uh, as the York and Rock Hill Church gathers today to exalt your name, that your Holy Spirit will be with us. And Father, you are Alpha and you are Omega. You know the beginning from the end. And Father, you know how to order our steps. And so, Lord, I just pray that your will will be done. I pray for this service, that you will be glorified and that everything that is said and done will be pleasing in your sight. Be with our brothers and sisters who are at the York Church, Father. I pray that their service will be a blessing in your sight. May your spirit be with them. And Father, I pray that we'll remember your son, Jesus the Christ. Father, that we will spend time at the foot of the cross. Lord, that we will turn it all over to you. Help us, for we are feeble and weak. And we can do nothing without you. It's in your blessed, holy, and precious name that we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 11. Again, that's Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 11. And would everyone please stand for the reading of God's word? Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word, and you may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to you all. Happy Sabbath. I just want to introduce myself for those of you who may not know who I am. I'm Pastor Casey. I pastor both this Adventist church and the one in Monroe. And it is my pleasure to be back with you guys this morning. 
Thank you, Ms. Vivian, for reading the scripture and for the rest of you who participated, especially from York. We're very glad to have you. And all of you from York, we're very glad to have you here. You all know these people, each other, probably better than I know you. But I'm glad that each of you are here with us this morning. Amen. And it's, it's good for us to have a, a nearly full house this morning. I will agree with a couple people in the back who are fanning. It is a little warm uh, in here, but uh, we're going we're gonna to get started this morning. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much that you love us so much. Thank you for the ways that you hold us up, the ways that you give us good things. Thank you that you are our high priest. As we go into your word, I ask that you'd be with us, that you would draw us close to you, that you would be fully seen and fully known, and that we would not have any, anything that stands between us and you. May your words speak. In Jesus' name, amen. So for those of you who may not know, or those of you who uh, may have forgotten, this year we're walking through a series on Christ and him crucified. And Paul says, and I believe it's 2 Corinthians, that I've determined to know nothing among you save Christ and him crucified. So we're exploring God, Jesus, and different aspects of his character and his ministry toward us. So we're going to start in our scripture reading for the day, Hebrews 9 and verse 11. As I was looking through aspects of God's character, aspects of Jesus' ministry that I thought maybe we could use a reminder of, sometimes I think we, we think we talk a lot about the Christian experience and we talk a lot about the sacrifices that we have to make and, and all of those, those are great things to talk about. Please don't get me wrong. But I want us to remember the promises that when we choose Jesus, what happens? That when we choose Jesus, Something happens, but Christ comes as our high priest. It doesn't just say come as our high priest, does it? Different translations will have different ways of saying things, or different versions will have different ways, but it says, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come. Jesus is not the, just the high priest who forgives our sins. He is absolutely that as he does his ministry in the sanctuary, not to take away from that at all. But there are other good things to come. And I want us to focus on that when we choose Jesus, when we allow him to be our high priest, when we allow him to be a part of our journey, there are good things to come. I've recently started doing something a little different, and I do have the prizes in my car. So those of you who are under the age of 15, will you raise your hand? All right. Now. There is, don't sigh at me, I saw that. There is a prize, prizes that I have in my car. If you can count accurately the number of times I say a phrase, I have prizes in my car. You don't have to, but the choice is up to you. So I'm gonna just put that out there for the young ones. We do this at Monroe, and every time I get off the platform, like 10 children surround me like, I got 4,500 or I got three or whatever. I will need a designated adult to count as well. Is there an adult who's willing to volunteer to be my control group? To count the number of times I say a phrase. Okay, Miss Matet, you will be able to. If someone else wants to count as my backup, you are welcome to count. But uh, I don't count while I speak, so having an adult who's able to count is really helpful. And our phrase this morning, are you ready? I'm about to say it for the first time. Our phrase this morning is Jesus brings good things. What is it? Jesus brings good things. All right, now that phrase, now I may mix it up a little bit and say Jesus brings good things to my life. It still counts, all right? As long as I say those words, Jesus brings good things. And if you're counting that, I've said it three times already. Jesus brings good things, that makes four. So what good things does he bring? What good things does he bring? If he's a high priest of good things to come, what are those good things? What does it mean that Jesus is the high priest of good things to come? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to James together. It's immediately following the book of Hebrews, James chapter 1 and verse 7. James chapter 1 and verse 7. Can someone read that for us this morning? Let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. 
Well, I wrote down the wrong verse, didn't I? Well, anyway, the verse that I was supposed to have you read, sometimes I get my numbers backwards and mixed up. So it is that every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord, which is 17. So Ed, would you read 17 for us this morning? I will. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of the Lord. Every what kind of gift, folks? Every good gift. And what every what kind of gift? Perfect gift. So Jesus brings us good things. Jesus brings us perfect things. I love this. I love this picture of a high priest who not only is doing the bare minimum for us and and pleading our cases before God, but this is a high priest of good things to come. This is a high priest who gives us every good and perfect gift. Yeah. Every good and perfect gift comes from him as part of his ministry. As part of his ministry of high priest, Jesus brings good things. And I also love that if we flip it around, <laughs> God gives us good and perfect gifts for us. <clears throat> I don't want us to miss this. Yes, every good and perfect thing is from him, right? We know this. The good things in our lives are from Jesus, but also that God does give us good things. What's the definition of a gift? Anybody just yell it out. Something that has no price for us. It's free. Yes, one more maybe? Something unexpected. So, so let me ask you this. If every good and perfect gift is from him, if God gives us good and perfect gifts, and if Jesus brings us good things, did we do anything to earn good things? No. Did, can we do anything to earn good things, good gifts? No. God wants to give you good and perfect gifts for free. God wants to give you good and perfect gifts for free. We don't have a God. We don't have Jesus who sits as our high priest of good things to come. We don't have him up in heaven waiting on us to earn the good gifts. Because you can't earn a gift or it's not a gift. He says, I want to just gift you good things. It doesn't matter how much Bible reading we've done in the morning, if we've checked off our 15 minutes that makes us a good Christian. It doesn't matter whether we've done this, that, and the other, how many times we've had to sin and ask forgiveness. It doesn't matter how perfect we've eaten or acted. The good gifts, the perfect gifts, are because Jesus brings us good things. Is it important to, to, to follow Jesus and his example? Yes, I'm not trying to discount that. I'm not trying to say that it's not, but I'm saying these good and perfect gifts are not a result of our behavior. These good and perfect gifts are gifts. Because Jesus brings us good things. Psalm 84:11. Psalm 84 and verse 11. Can someone read that for us? For the Lord is good, for the Lord God is the Son of Peter. The world will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk up. All right, is he going to withhold things from us who follow him? No. No. Why? Because Jesus brings good things. The Lord is a sun and the shield. If you remember, as David is talking about God's goodness here, as, as, he's, as he's writing, when what story in the Old Testament does a sun and a shield remind you of? Anybody? Say it loud so I can hear you. Okay, we're, we're in the ballpark. Let's, let's rewind just a little bit. Where was God a pillar of fire and a shield? In the desert. He acted as a cloud to shield them 
and as a pillar of fire, which they would have equated with the sun, to give them warmth. So David calls his readers back to that memory of God's goodness in the past. Did God have to do that for the children of Israel? Could they have made it at some, somehow through the desert without a shield and a fire? Maybe, maybe not. He didn't have to do that. He could have had a band of 20 or 30 survivors. But he chose to give them a sun and shield. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. God is not going to withhold good things from you. Sometimes I think, and yes, it does say those who walk uprightly, but uprightly just means those who have some sort of connection, those who have a walk with God. And I don't, I don't think that that means that God's goodness is based at all upon us. But rather, David is saying, those of you who are following him, listen up. God's not withholding good things from you. Because Jesus brings us good things. God is not withholding good things from you, those who are reading this, who follow him. So whether it's that job that you're waiting to hear about, or maybe it's a housing situation you're waiting to hear about, or maybe it's a financial situation, or maybe you're waiting for healing, or maybe you're waiting for something else, whatever that situation, that goodness in your life that you are waiting for, maybe it's for your children. Maybe it's good things for your grandchildren. Whatever that good thing that you're waiting on God to do, we have a high priest of good things to come. And the Lord God will not withhold any good thing from you, your children, your grandchildren, the people that you love. He's not a God who withholds arbitrarily until we meet some good enough standard. He is not withholding good for me. Now, this is not to say that we will only ever experience good. I think there are some in our congregation, if not every single person here this morning, who has experienced what life can bring that is gut-wrenching, painful, and horrible. We see some of that in the news today with Hurricane Ian. But rather that through it all, in it all, because of it all even, Jesus brings good things. Through all of it, Jesus brings good things. Through all of the things that people are saying about you, maybe at your job or, God forbid, at your church, whatever thing is going on in your life, maybe your spouse is on your last nerve, maybe your children are on your last nerve, maybe you're worried about them, the Lord will not withhold any good thing. Because Jesus is our high priest of good things. And Jesus, what? Brings good things. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. Can someone read that for us? Matthew 7, 11. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things? If Jesus is our high priest of good things to come, sometimes I, I feel like we have this idea of God, at least I know I do sometimes, where God gives us what I need and not necessarily the good things that I, that I want. When your children ask you for something outside of food, are they normally asking for things they need? I don't know. No. Normally they're asking for things that they want. And some of them are good ones. Some of them are a little, how shall we say this, extra, a little bit extra ones. When God's saying the things that you want, when you ask him, if you want to give, how many of you want to give your children all the good things that they want? Kids, close your eyes. Close them. Shh, don't see your parents. How many of you want to give your kids the good things that they want? Yeah. If you've been being sinful, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more then your perfect father who is in heaven will give good things to you Jesus is speaking here he says in verse 7 ask and it shall be given to you seek and while we're not preaching a prosperity gospel of a God who gives us everything we could ever want we are saying that the things that are good in our lives God will give us 
full stop. Jesus brings us good things. God says, if you know how to give, how many parents have ever gotten, and I, I, maybe I shouldn't ask for a raise a hand for this, um, but for Christmas, you've got your kid or grandkid. We'll open it up to the grandkids because I know sometimes we don't give our kids what we want. We give the grandkids the things that they want. Is there any grandparents here who can attest to that? Yeah. How many of you have ever been, you knew your, your I, I do this for my, for my cousin, you knew something they really wanted and you got it for him for their Christmas, for their birthday, and it was a surprise. How many of you have ever done that? Anybody? Okay, a couple of parents are willing to admit that they did that. God says, if you can give good things to your children, if you can give them the little things and you also provide for them the clothes, the food, the shoes, every six months to three months when they outgrow things, right? If you can do all of that for your children, if you can provide all of that for your children and you want to give them good things, how much more so a perfect, loving father? How much more so a God who wants to give you good things. And I don't want us to miss this aspect of this. God doesn't just give us good things begrudgingly. He desires to give us good things. God doesn't just give us things because he has to because he's a parent. He gives us things because he wants to those good things in your life and maybe there's good things in each of our lives that we don't even know about yet that God is planning to give us. Maybe we're praying for something that God knows is not a good thing in our life and so he's planning on giving us something better. If you know how to give good gifts, if you want to give good gifts to the people you love, how much more so God giving good gifts to those that he loves because Jesus brings good things. Psalm chapter 34. As we walk into the season of, of sort of a thankfulness of considering what God has done for us as, as we're still um, a month and a half out for Thanksgiving, but I think maybe using all of fall as things are dying, as things are, and we're in Psalm 34 and verse 10, as things are dying, as, as fall is approaching, I think it's a good time for us to remember the good things that God does really every day, but especially I think fall as we approach the holidays and as we start to think about family more and to remember those good things and, be, and express gratefulness for them. Psalm chapter 34 and verse 10. Can someone read that for us? Therefore listen to me, you men of understanding, for it is from the weakness and from the Almighty is victory. Are you in 3410? <laughs> All right, anyone in Psalm 3410? Young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. How many of you are here seeking the Lord today? The, the, the David, of all people, who would have known the ups and downs, the ins and outs of a relationship with God, David says the lions, the most powerful animal he would have known about, may go through hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. There's a note in my Bible. I have the uh, Ellen G. White editions. It says, God invites us to prove for ourselves the reality of his word, the truth of his promises. He bids us taste and see that the Lord is good. good. Instead of depending upon the word of another, we are to taste for ourselves. Because Jesus brings good things. Turn to your neighbor. I want you to say, Jesus brings good things. All right, now you say it back. Jesus brings good things. And we have the invitation to taste and see for ourselves. Some of you are wanting God to give you good things. You desire those good things, but you're a little afraid. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I haven't checked enough Christian boxes or Adventist boxes. Maybe I need to do this. Maybe I've been struggling to give offering. Maybe I've returned my tithe, but I, 
Set all that aside. Are you seeking him? Ask him for good things. Not that we get to excuse any and all behavior. But that your God wants to give you good things full stop. David says you won't be lacking any good thing. And I think we can apply this to our children, who I know we pray over, and, and grandchildren, when God says that we can taste and see for ourselves that we shall not want, we shall not lack any good thing, because Jesus brings good things to my life, to the world around us. Jesus brings good things to you, to your neighbor, to that person at work that annoys the ever-living life out of you. Jesus brings good things full stop. Romans 6.23 as we wrap up here. The best gift of all, we know this, can Romans 6.23, can someone read that for us? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God didn't just say, I'm going to give you good things, and that's all I'm going to do for you. God said, I'm going to die for you, grant you the eternal life that no matter what you do, you will never deserve, and then give you good things on top of that. God didn't just say, I'm going to give you the spiritual meal. He said, I'm going to give you an everlasting life where you can taste all of the delights of heaven. God said, I want to bring good things to you. I give you everlasting life and more. Because Jesus brings good things eternally. Jesus brings good things eternally. And the best gift he could have ever given us was himself. And it is a gift. There's nothing that we can do to earn any of the gifts that God has given us. Do we make more room for them when we follow him and, and, and listen to the prompts of his Holy Spirit? Absolutely we do. But we're not earning them. We're just making room for them. The gift of God is eternal life. Back to Hebrews 9.11. There's something from this verse that I don't want us to miss. Some translations translate this verse a little differently. Translate the verbs in Greek a little bit differently. Some of them translate it like this, but Christ being come a high priest of good things that are already here. And if, if you dive into the Greek, and we're not going to do that here together because it's a lot of um, time that we don't have. You can translate the Greek that way, Christ as the high priest of good things that are already here. My friends, you already have salvation. Okay, let's try that again. My friends, do you already have salvation? Yes. Okay. Do you already have that good gift of Jesus? Yes. Do you already have the good promises that he has promised to you? Yes. He is the high priest of not only good things to come, but good things that are already here. Amen. Jesus said, your, may, may your kingdom be established in our hearts as it is in heaven. My friends, these good things are already here. Jesus is bringing, and you can count that one, yes, Jesus is bringing good things to my life now. Jesus is bringing good things to my friends now. Jesus is bringing good things to my church now. Jesus is bringing good things to my spouse, my children, and my grandchildren, the people I care about now. We don't have to wait for those good things. They're not just, Jesus is not just the high priest of good things to come. He is the high priest of the good things here that have already come. Amen. They are simply waiting for you and I to make room, to accept them. Jesus stands ready to give us those good things. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry. Jesus brings good things full stop. And Jesus is bringing good things. Jesus has brought good things. I want to take a moment of quiet before I pray. And why don't we take some time to thank God for the good things in our lives? 
to thank God for being a high priest of good things that are already here. And then we'll sing our closing song. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus brings good things. Thank you that Jesus is the high priest of not only good things to come, but good things that are already here. Help us to remember that, to thank you for it, to dwell on you and your goodness, your love, and the character and your character so that we can emulate that in our own lives. Teach us who you are each and every day, and may we be like you, a giver of good things. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't have the bulletin up here with me, so let's carry 73, I believe it's holy, holy, holy. All right, if you'll stand with me and sing holy, holy, holy. cause his face to shine upon you and may we remember every single day that Jesus brings good things. Amen. Amen. We invite each of you to join us for potluck. We have a wonderful spread and for those of you who may have counted, if you will meet me at the door afterwards, we can uh, arrange for your prizes. Thank you.